hero of the rails. It was summer on Sodor. The sky was bright blue. The fields were full of flowers, and the birds sang sweetly. As Thomas filled up with water, he felt very happy. Suddenly, there was a whoosh and a whoosh and a clackety clack as a streak of silver roared by on the track. Fizzling fireboxes! What was that? All over Sodor, Thomas's friends were buffeted and blasted on their tracks. Bubbling boilers! Bust my buffers! Watch my paintwork! Crumbling tracks! Who was that? Gosh! Slow down, Speedy! Rail Raider! Later, Thomas and his friends were at Knapford. They were very puzzled. He was big. He was silver. He was very, very fast. That must mean it's... Spencer! Hello, Sodor! What do you know? I'm here for the summer. Why? I have a very important job to do. The Duke and Duchess of Boxford are having a new summer house built. It has to be finished in time for the Duke and Duchess's holiday. I'm very busy, no time to chat. And Spencer seems smugly away. Cinders and ashes. Having Speedy Spencer on Sodor for one day is bad. But for the whole summer is terrible. That afternoon, Thomas and Percy were huffing and puffing up Gordon's Hill. Then they heard Spencer whooshing and whooshing behind them. A little more puff and you might make it to the top by tea time. Bossy boiler! Next, Spencer caught up with Gordon. Get out of my way, slowpoke! Ugh, the indignity. Toby was huffing slowly to a junction. Spencer steamed alongside, hooting and tooting. It looks like you're too old now to be really useful, Toby. Toby gasped. He was upset. He missed his green light. Edward and James were chuffing cheerfully along. Spencer slowed. Dear, oh dear, it takes two old engines to pull one freight car, does it? I'm pulling five. And Spencer thundered away. James was so cross, he couldn't puff at all. That night, the engines could only talk about Spencer. He told Toby he was too old. He's taken over my express line. He'll never have a shiny coat like mine. He'll never have manners. Spencer's scary. The next day, Thomas was at Brendam Docks. He had a heavy flatbed of machinery to collect. Spencer was there. He was being coupled up to five flatbeds of building materials. Dear, oh dear, Thomas. It's just as well the Duke and Duchess don't have a tiny toy tank engine like you. The summer house would never be finished. What do you mean? I mean, Thomas, you just can't pull heavy loads. Thomas was upset, and so were the other engines. This time, Spencer had gone too far. Yes, I can. I can pull just as heavy loads as you. Yes, he can. Even heavier. Thomas is not a toy. He's a really useful engine, and he's very strong. The Sodor engines didn't scare Spencer. An idea had bubbled in his boiler. Very well, Thomas. Meet me tomorrow at dawn at the shunting yards. We will have a contest of strength. We will each pull a heavy load and we'll see who can pull it for longer and for further. Spencer slid slyly out of the docks. Suddenly, Thomas felt very worried. Bust my buffers. I can't do this. Spencer will win a contest of strength. 
The other engines saw that their friend was worried. You're the number one engine on Sodor, and you'll show Spencer that Sodor engines are more special than he is. I know that because you're my best friend. Thomas looked at his best friend, Percy. Percy believed in him. I will meet Spencer at dawn, and I will win. Early the next morning, in the cold light of dawn, Thomas and his friends waited for Spencer. They could see a streak of silver engine puffing towards them. It was Spencer. Thomas felt worried. I can't do this, Percy. Yes, you can, Thomas. You always tell us we can do whatever we want to. So can you. The tracks were cleared for Spencer and Thomas, and both engines were coupled up to their heavy loads. Edward puffed forward. You will each take different tracks round the island. You may only stop for coal and water. Then, Edward whistled long and hard. The contest had begun. Spencer and Thomas pumped their pistons. Thomas puffed off with a heave and a huff. I can do it. I'll puff for longer. I'll show Spencer I really am stronger. Spencer smiled as he slid away. I'll show Thomas who's strong and who's weak. He'll puff home with a squeak and a creak. The other engines watched and worried. Then they blew their whistles long and strong. Good, Good luck, Thomas. Thomas! Thomas and Spencer puffed round the island. They clickety-clacked along the tracks. They whooshed through woods, and they huffed up hills. Spencer steamed and smiled. He raced and he roared. Thomas puffed and huffed. He heaved and he hauled. <laughs> Silly little engine, when will he learn? You can do whatever you want to, and I want to win! Thomas was huffing up a steep slope. He was puffing and panting, and his axles ached. At last, he reached the top. Hooray! I did it! Then there was trouble. There was a clang and a prank. Thomas gasped. Cinders and ashes! I've broken my brakes! Thomas's wheels started to whir and to wobble. He flew faster and faster down the hill. Oh no! Oh! Help! Thomas raced down one hill and rattled up the next. Help! I can't stop! Thomas's heavy freight cars pushed him on and on through a junction where Spencer was waiting. Blistering boilers! And into some potato cars. Potatoes bounced everywhere. But Thomas sped on into a flatbed of jelly barrels. Sticky jelly flew in the air and landed all over Thomas. But still, he went on and found himself rolling along an old rickety track. Ahead, Thomas could see a thick wall of bushes and funnels, how can I stop? With a scrunch and a crunch, Thomas crashed into the bushes and came to a stop. Flaming fireboxes, that was scary. Thomas looked around. After the racing and rattling, it was very quiet. Spencer will be back at the shunting yards now. He'll be puffing with pride because he won the contest. And my best friend Percy will be wondering where I am. I don't know where I am. Everything was very quiet. Thomas didn't know what to do. Then he heard a voice. Hello. Thomas looked around. There was no one there. He waited, hardly daring to puff. Hello. Thomas looked around again. He couldn't see anyone. The voice seems to be coming from the bushes. Very slowly, Thomas chuffed forward into the bushes. The branches crackled and crunched. Then, Thomas gasped. His eyes popped wide with wonder. There, on the other side of the bushes, was a very old engine. It was broken and rusty. Thomas felt scared. He didn't dare speak. Then, 
The old engine smiled at him. It was a little frightened smile, but it made the old engine look kind and gentle, and it made Thomas feel less scared. Hello, too bad your brakes failed. Doesn't that always happen when you're on a hill? The old engine smiled again. Thomas wanted to smile too, but he was scared. He didn't know whether to speak, toot for help, or race backwards as fast as he could chuff. But Thomas didn't move. He couldn't take his eyes off this extraordinary engine. Hello, my name is Thomas. Ah, my name is Hiro. Thomas wasn't sure what to say next. He'd never met an engine as old and strange as Hero. Why are you here? Where have you been? Ah, that's a very long story. Do you like stories, Thomas? Yes, the little engines in the hills tell me stories all the time. Then, I hope you will like mine. I came here a long, long time ago from another island. I was one of the first steam engines to arrive on Sodor. Thomas was amazed. Where is your island? My island is a long, long way away. There are mountains and snow and sea. There are lots of railways. I was the strongest engine at home. I was called Master of the Railway. How did you get to Sodor? I came in a very big ship. The journey lasted many days, and we sailed many seas. When I arrived at the docks, it didn't look at all like home. What was Sodor like then? It was very quiet. I was the only engine on Sodor. They called me Master of the Railway here too. I was very happy. What happened? I started to break down. The mechanics didn't have parts for me, so I was put in a siding. I had to wait for parts for my island. I waited and waited, and now I'm sure the parts will never come. Thomas's eyes were wide with wonder. Do you miss your home? Yes, I do. I miss being master of the railway. Thomas looked at his sad new friend. He felt sorry for Hero. I know. I'll go and get Sir Topham Hat. Sir Topham Hat runs our railway now. He will know how to help you. No, no! Please don't do that. You must not tell Sir Topham Hat. Thomas was surprised. Why? I'm an old engine that cannot be repaired. I know what happens to old engines that cannot be really useful. They are scrapped and sent to the smelter's yard. That's not fair. That's not right. That can't happen to you. But Thomas could see that his new friend, who was once master of the railway, was now old, alone, and scared. So Thomas made a decision. I will look after you, Hero. I won't tell Sir Topham Hat until you are fixed. You are safe with me. I'm sure I can find the parts to fix you. I promise I will make you a really useful engine once more. I will make you master of the railway again. Hero smiled the biggest smile he had smiled in a long, long time. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you for looking after me. Thomas puffed with pride. Later that morning, Thomas was at the Sodor Steamworks. He was having his brakes fixed. Thomas liked the steamworks. There was hustle and bustle, sparks and spanners. It was lively, and friendly, and there was Victor. Thomas liked Victor. Thomas, tell me, my friend, what were you doing there in the middle of nowhere? Pulling seven loaded flatbeds. Are you crazy? Next time Spencer tells you to do something silly, do me a favor, will you? Say no. Okay, Victor. Thomas had almost forgotten about the contest with Spencer. 
His boiler was bubbling with excitement of a hero. He wanted to tell Victor, but he knew he couldn't. Other engines might hear, and then someone might tell Sir Topham Hatt. So there you are, Thomas. Broken down, I see. Seven flatbeds must have been just too heavy for you. Good morning, Spencer. Well done. Spencer was amazed. He wasn't expecting Thomas to be cheery. Uh, what did you say? I said, good morning, and well done. I... I... Do you have a job to do, Spencer? Or are you just going to stand here gossiping? You're taking up a lot of track. Spencer was shocked. No one speaks to me like that. Then Spencer slid away, sneering. He's all silver steam and bossy boiler, that one. <laughs> Thomas laughed. He liked Victor. Okay, my friend, you're all fixed. Please stay away from Mr. Silversteam. Sir Topham Hat needs you on your branch line. Thank you, Victor. Oh, Kevin, what are you doing? How many times do I have to tell you, you don't drop things, you lower things? Slowly, slowly, gently, gently. Yes, boss. Sorry, boss. I was trying, boss. Just a slip of my hook. Behind Kevin, Thomas saw something very interesting. A wagon with an old piston cylinder on it. That would be good for Hero. I wonder if Victor would let me have it. Thomas puffed away, excited. That afternoon, Thomas was busy on his branch line. He wanted to finish his jobs as fast as he could puff. Tell me all about the contest, Thomas. I'm sorry, Percy. I can't stop. I have so much to do. I'll tell you all about it later. Percy was disappointed. Bye then, Thomas. Later, Thomas puffed back to the Sodor Steamworks. He was pleased to see it was very quiet. What's going to happen to that old cylinder, Victor? That heap of old trash. It's just taking up space. Shall I take it away for you? Aren't you too busy, my friend? No, I can take it easily. Would you like a helping hook? No, thank you, Kevin. So, Thomas was coupled up to the flatbed, and he chuffed cheerfully along towards the track that led to Hero. Then, he heard the clatter of wheels and pounding pistons of a big engine behind him. <gasps> it's Spencer. I don't want him to see me. He'll wonder what I'm doing with this old cylinder. Thomas huffed and puffed as fast as he could towards the siding. His boiler bubbled as he slowed to a stop. Tall trees hid Thomas from the main line. Spencer's rattle and roar came closer and closer as he rolled by. Then Spencer stopped and reversed. He was on the other side of the trees to Thomas. Thomas hardly dared puff. Mm. Bust my buffers. That was close. Hero was very happy to see Thomas. Thomas's engineer and his assistant unloaded the old cylinder. Tomorrow, Hero, I'll come back and we can start work. I have to go back to Tidmouth Sheds now. The other engines will be wondering where I am. Thank you, Thomas. Thomas smiled and steamed quickly away and puffed back toward Tidmouth. He chuffed around a bend. Then he gasped. <gasps> Cinders and ashes! The Duke and Duchess of Boxford Summer House! It's very close to Hero's hiding place. Spencer will be here every day. If Spencer finds out about Hero, he's sure to tell Sir Topham Hat, and then Hero is sure to be scrapped. I must be very, very careful. That night, Thomas told his friends all about his contest with Spencer. He was going to tell them about Hero, but Sir Topham had arrived. Tomorrow, you will all have a very busy day. Your jobs will start especially early. So, Thomas, 
Don't puff round the island pulling heavy loads or any other silly ideas. I need really useful engines, not really broken ones. Yes, sir. Now, Thomas didn't dare tell his friends about Hero. Sir Topham Hatt had spoken. No broken engines. The next day, Thomas had a very busy morning. But he wasn't happy. He wanted to be with Hero. Just then, Percy puffed up. You look worried, Thomas. What's the matter? Thomas looked at his best friend. He always told Percy everything. I found the oldest engine on Sodor. His name is Hero. Bust my buffers. Where? I'll show you later, I promise. He needs us to look after him. Will you help me? Of course I will, Thomas. What can I do? Please will you take this flatbed of farm machinery to Farmer McCall for me. But what shall I do with my mail cars? Leave them somewhere safe, somewhere right off the track. Later, you can deliver the mail. Now I must chuff away to Hero as quickly as I can. Percy was excited. He was happy to help Thomas. Percy had puffed a long way. He was on tracks he didn't know. He was looking for somewhere to hide his mail cars. Must find somewhere right off the track. My cars must be safe until I get back. This is the perfect place to leave my cars. No one will find them here. Thomas huffed happily towards Hero's hideout. He was so busy thinking about helping Hero that he didn't see Spencer steaming up behind him. What are you doing here, Thomas? You're a long way from your branch line. I'm on my way to Brendam Docks. Thomas raced away from Spencer and the summer house as quickly as his pistons would pump. This is very strange. Very strange indeed. Thomas didn't dare chuff to Hero until much later. I thought you weren't coming, Thomas. I told you, Hero, I'm not going to let you down. Then, Thomas's engineer and assistant engineer opened their toolboxes and started work. Soon, Hero's piston rods were in place. I'll come back with more parts for you, Hero. Thank you, Thomas. Please don't get into trouble for me. I'm an old engine. And I will make you new again. Bye, Hero. Thomas was puffing home as fast as his pistons could pump. He was late. He had to puff past the summer house. Thomas, you're up to something, aren't you? Thomas didn't answer. He chuffed quickly away. Spencer followed close behind. Thomas was puffing fast. Then he saw Percy at the water tower. Percy looked sad. I popped a valve when I was pulling the heavy farm machinery. Thomas felt sorry for his friend. Spencer had followed Thomas. He steamed to a stop. Dear, oh dear, Percy. You should let a stronger engine pull the heavy loads. Spencer chuffed on. I'm sorry, Percy. You were helping me. Now you've broken down. I'm worried, Thomas. I still haven't delivered the mail. Sir Topham Hatt will be cross. Don't worry, Percy. Tomorrow, I'll help you. Now I'll shunt you to the Sodor Steamworks. Victor will have you fixed in no time. All the way to the Sodor Steamworks, the two friends chattered and chuckled about Hero. The Sodor Steamworks was quiet. Victor was very surprised to see Thomas puff in with Percy. Flaming fireboxes! What's happened now, my friend? I asked Percy to pull my special for me. His valve popped. Why didn't you pull it yourself? Um, because I, uh... Because he... Oh! Kevin, slowly, slowly, gently, gently. 
Sorry, boss. Just a slip of the... Hook. I know. Then Thomas saw the old parts. He knew Hero needed them. He knew he would have to tell Victor about Hero. Victor, I need your help. We need your help. I'll always help you, my friend. What is it you need? So, Thomas told Victor about Hero. Victor was amazed. Very good. Looking after another engine is very important. Especially looking after an old engine. Tell Sir Topham Hatt. No! We can't do that yet! Hero's old and broken. Sir Topham Hatt might have to scrap him. But if we make Hero really useful again, he won't. Okay, I understand. Whatever I put in this corner of the yard, you can take. Thomas and Percy were very happy. Thank you, Victor. Okay, Percy, your turn to be fixed. That evening, Thomas puffed into Tidmouth's sheds. Sir Topham Hatt was waiting. He was cross. Thomas, I hear Percy was pulling your special instead of delivering the mail. And now, Percy's mail cars are missing. Thomas felt bad. I'm sorry, sir. I don't know where Percy's mail cars are. I will help Percy find them tomorrow. That's exactly what you'll do tomorrow. By my order! 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 Sir Topham Hatt's voice boomed round Tidmouth sheds from top to tracks. Thomas's friends looked at him. They knew something strange was going on. Thomas, is everything all right? Thomas huffed a huge puff. He needed his friend's help. I have something very important to tell you. As the stars sparkled above Tidmouth, Thomas told them all about Hero. The engines had never heard such an amazing story. The next morning, Thomas was a really useful engine. He huffed and he puffed. He shoved and he shunted, without stopping to ease his axles. Spencer watched Thomas's every wheel turn and piston pump. Spencer didn't go to work at the Duke and Duchess's summer house. He was too busy watching Thomas to see Gordon go by pulling a flatbed of old engine parts for Hero. Thomas saw Gordon. Gordon saw Thomas, and they smiled. Thomas had worked hard all day. He was going to the Sodor Steamworks. Gordon steamed towards Thomas. Gordon was beaming from buffer to buffer. He was very happy to be helping Hero. Job done! Job done! Now I must hurry. The express mustn't be late. Well done, Gordon! Thank you, Thomas! At the Sodor Steamworks, sparks flew and cogs creaked. Percy was almost ready to leave. Percy and Thomas smiled. Then Sir Topham had arrived. He was cross. Thomas and Percy, the mail cars are still missing. Tomorrow you must find them. Yes, sir. Of course, sir. Victor could see that Thomas and Percy were worried. Percy, you're fixed. Come on, Thomas. Cheer your friend up. I know just how to do that. Follow me, Percy. Thomas, this afternoon I will leave something for you. Thank you, Victor. Thank you, Victor! Thomas and Percy puffed up to Hero's hideout. Percy saw Hero for the first time. He gasped. Hero, this is my best friend, Percy. Um, hello? Hello, Percy. You have a very special best friend. I think that is because you are special, too. Do you have best friends? Yes, I do. At home. Do you miss them? I do. That's sad. Don't be sad. Look at my new funnel. Gordon brought it for me. <laughs> when Gordon smiles, it changes his whole face. <laughs> It is most interesting. 
That made Thomas and Percy smile. Good, Good night, night, hero. hero. Good night, my friends. Uh, until tomorrow. On their way home, Thomas and Percy chuffed cheerily past the summer house. Their wheels whirred and their boilers bubbled. Neither of them saw Spencer. Spencer saw them. He was hiding in the shadows. Once they had passed, he slid silently out of the siding. I'm going to find out what that tricky tank engine is doing. It's time for Steely Spencer to hunt for clues. In the morning, Thomas puffed off with Percy to find his mail cars. Are you sure you can't remember where you left them, Percy? I can't! Think very hard, Percy. I am, but I can only think about Hero! Emily was busy doing Thomas's jobs on his branch line. Spencer watched her. Emily didn't take any notice of him. Why is Thomas puffing around the summer house? I don't know. Thomas is a busy engine. He chuffs all over the island. Hmm. This made Spencer cross. Why are you working on Thomas's branch line? Because, as I said, Thomas is a busy engine. Where is he busy? You're a big, strong engine, Spencer. Why don't you go and look? Spencer really didn't like this. He stared hard at Emily. Spencer stared so hard, he didn't see Percy and Thomas puff by on the upper track. Nor did he see Edward huff by with a flatbed of engine parts for Hero. That evening, Thomas and Percy puffed up to Hero's hideout. Look at me now! Hero's boiler was finished. He was a colorful patchwork of parts. Thomas and Percy were very happy. You look wonderful! Hooray! Oh, thank you. But I'm worried for you. That silver engine was sniffing around here last night. Stay away for a little while. Your friends are taking good care of me. Today, Edward was very wise, and tomorrow I think James is coming. James isn't wise at all. He's a bossy boiler. <laughs> and for the first time, Thomas and Percy heard Hero laugh. Loud, long, and happy. The next morning, Thomas and Percy searched the quarry for the mail cars. They couldn't find the cars, but they found Spencer. Mavis was delighted to see Spencer. Spencer, what an honor. Let me take you around the quarry. <laughs> Thomas and Percy thought that was very funny. Spencer didn't. He scowled. And he didn't see James puffing by with a flatbed of parts for Hero. Mavis proudly took Spencer under the slate hop. He chuffed too quickly, then too slowly. Then he rolled back too far. Slate and dust flew down his funnel and bounced off his boiler. <laughs> Later, Thomas and Percy were taking on coal. Emily chuffed by. She had a flatbed of old parts for Hero. Emily was very excited. Good luck, Emily. Then Thomas saw Spencer. Percy gasped. <gasps> Cinders and ashes. Spencer was being pulled by Edward and shunted by Henry. Slate dust had blocked his funnel. Spencer had to go to the Sodor Steamworks. Now, Thomas and Percy could visit Hero safely. They were excited. Hero looked more and more like a really useful engine. Thomas, I must be really, really useful before Sir Topham Hutt sees me. You will be, Hero. Don't worry. I'll make sure of that. Oh. Listen, Spencer. Looking miserable doesn't get the job done any faster. Tomorrow you will be fixed. Come on, give me a smile. Just to show me you can. 
Thomas and Percy puffed in. Ah, Kevin! Then, Victor saw that Spencer had closed his eyes because of the noise. Victor winked at Thomas. Uh, no problem, Kevin. Those hooks can be slippy. You're doing a good job, Kevin. Keep going. And Thomas chuffed carefully away from Spencer and off to Hero with his new parts. Hero, what do you think about when you're alone? My home. Since I have been talking to you and your friends about it, I miss it more than ever. Thomas understood how hard it must be for Hero to be away from home. He wanted to cheer him up. Tomorrow, Percy is going to puff across the island to get the last part we need for you. Then you will be ready. You won't have to be alone anymore. Thank you, Thomas. You understand me well. That night, Sir Topham Hatt was waiting for Thomas at Tidmouth Sheds. He was cross. Thomas, the mail cars are still missing. Spencer is at the Sodor Steamworks. The building materials for the summer house are stacked up at the docks, and you're not working on your branch line. What is going on? I'm sorry, sir. Tomorrow I will make sure everything is put right. Tomorrow then, Thomas. Don't worry, Thomas. Tomorrow, Percy will get the last part Hero needs. We'll all take it in turns to guard Hero. Tomorrow, it will all be all right. Don't worry. <sighs> Thank you. Dawn broke across the island of Sodor. Spencer was back on the tracks. Today, I will find out what Tricky Thomas is up to. Spencer was looking for clues. He looked behind bushes. He steamed down sidings and puffed closer and closer to Hero's hiding place. Suddenly, Spencer whistled long and hard. What's this I've found? James and Toby heard Spencer. They pumped their pistons. Rattle my rods. I found Percy's mail cars. These must be part of Tricky Thomas's tricks. Suddenly, James and Toby steamed out. Spencer had puffed too close to Hero. James blew his whistle, and Toby rang his bell. Together, they chased the mighty Spencer down the track and away from Hero. The three engines raced and roared to a junction. Then, Thomas chuffed towards Spencer. Spencer was blocked. He couldn't puff forwards, and he couldn't huff backwards. And he had Percy's mail cars. Spencer, why did you take Percy's mail cars? You have caused confusion and delay. But I didn't take the... I'm not interested in your excuses, Spencer. Find Percy and give him back his mail cars. At once. I won't let Thomas get away with this. That afternoon, Hero was waiting for Thomas. He was excited. His firebox flared and his steam swirled. Percy will be here soon with your water injector. It's the last part you'll need to make enough steam. I wonder if Sir Topham Hatt will have seen any pictures of me. Of course he will. He will be very proud to have you as part of his railway. I'm so happy. I have waited a long time. Suddenly, there was the sound of a loud whistle. It was a whistle they both feared. It's Spencer. He's found us. Help Thomas. Spencer will make sure I'm sent to the smelter's yard. No, he won't, Hero. You're nearly fixed. You can puff away from Spencer. Follow me. So with a pounding puff and a heaving huff, Hero was on the tracks, following Thomas to steam away from Spencer. 
Hero steamed down the track, rattling and clattering. His pistons pumped and his boiler bubbled. Well done, Hero! Thank you, Tomas! <laughs> then there was trouble. Spencer snaked onto the tracks behind Thomas. Found you, Thomas. Spencer! Thomas's wheels whirred like the wind. You won't get away from me this time. Hero chuffed as fast as he could. He wanted to wish away from Spencer. Then Spencer saw Hero and gasped. Spencer had never seen an engine as strange as Hero before. Who are you? Hero! Thomas! That engine can't even puff properly. Hero's engine had started to clatter and clunk. His steam dome shook and his cylinders creaked. Hero was worried. Without the last engine part, Hero could only sputter and splutter. Hero's new lamp broke loose and hit Spencer. Now Hero's engine started to judder and jitter. Parts fell off. They clanged and they banged onto the track. No! Don't worry, Hero. You can do it! Thomas, help me! But the harder Hero huffed, the worse he wobbled. Keep puffing, Hero! More parts splattered and scattered from Hero's engine. Thomas! You can do it, Hero! I don't think he can. Hero knew Spencer was right. The master of the railway was once more a heap of scrap. Hero couldn't puff on. Is this what you've been doing, Thomas? Making a heap of scrap for the smelter's yard? Because that's the only thing that this engine's good for. Sir Topham Hatt will make sure of that. Thomas felt terrible. He had worked so hard, but he had let Hero down. How can I stop Hero going to the smelter's yard now? Then Thomas heard another whistle. It was Gordon and the Express. I'll race you to Maithwaite, Slowpoke Spencer! I'll win! Spencer was surprised. He saw Gordon thunder ahead with the Express. Oh no you won't, Gordon. I'll win. Spencer steamed after Gordon. His funnel flared and his wheels whirred. He didn't see Thomas looking down a smaller track. Don't worry, Hero. We'll hide you down here. Everything will be all right. But poor Hero looks sadder than ever. Gordon raced toward Maithwaite ahead of Spencer. Spencer was out of puff. Percy's mail cars rattled and prattled behind him. I won. I told you I would. Before Spencer could ease his axles, the door of the express swung open. The Duke and Duchess of Boxford stepped out. They were cross. Fumbling fenders. Spencer, you have let us down. We left you in charge of our summer house, and it's not ready for our holiday. Our friend Sir Topham Hatt says you spend all day watching Thomas. And taking mail cars that aren't yours. You told me you would take them back to Percy, and you haven't. Spencer's pride was in pieces. They, they have a very old engine, a, a heap of scrap, in fact. I was chasing it because, in fact, Sir Topham, you should... Please, Spencer, stop. Chasing engines that are a heap of scrap? We'll have to send you back to the mainland, it's quite clear. You're not fit to work. Please, may I help? I could work with Spencer at the summer house. I'm sure together we could have it ready in time. The Duke and Duchess were delighted. Thank you, Thomas. That is most kind of you. Please keep an eye on Spencer. He's clearly not feeling well. Spencer wished steam. It was all too terrible. It was getting late as Thomas chuffed to see Hero. Hero was very sad. You did everything you could, Thomas. But I know now, I will be sent to the smelter's yard. No, no you won't. I won't let that happen to you, I promise. Don't give up. And Thomas steamed sadly away to Tidmouth. 
all the engines were worried about Hero. And Cross with Spencer. I'm sorry I left my mail car so close to Hero. I didn't know he was there. It looked like a very good hiding place. Don't worry, Percy. We all did our best. What should we do now? I'm going to tell Sir Topham Hatt. Why? We tried to fix Hero by ourselves. It didn't work. We need his help. First of all, I'll finish the summer house with Spencer. Then Sir Topham Hatt will know that I am a really useful engine. And he will want to help me. The other engines were quiet. They knew Thomas was right. But they were worried for Hero. He was their friend. They wanted to look after him. While I'm busy, will you all go and visit Hero? Of course we will, Thomas. All the engines whistled. They were a team for Hero. For the next few days, Thomas and Spencer worked on the summer house busily. Thomas didn't let Spencer out of his sight. Thomas's friends all looked after Hero. He was never alone for long. He laughed and told stories about his homeland to Emily, Gordon, and Percy. He listened to Edward's wise words and cared that Henry had to have special coal. He admired James's shiny red coat and thought Toby was very special, the only steam tram he had ever met. The Duke and Duchess came to visit the summer house. It was almost complete. They were very pleased. Spencer beamed. He told them all about it, while Thomas puffed quietly away to see Hero. Hero was happy to see Thomas. Hello, Thomas, my best friend. Hello, Hero. Thomas could see Hero was sad. Hero, I won't let you be scrapped. Believe me, tonight I will fix everything. Thomas chuffed back to the summer house just in time to say goodbye to the Duke and Duchess. Thank you, Thomas. Without you, Spencer would never have finished on time. <laughs> I have to go to Knapford now. Why? To see Sir Topham Hatt. Spencer snarled. You're going to tell Sir Topham Hatt about that silly scrap engine. I'll get there first to make sure your plan doesn't work. That engine will be sent to the smelter's yard, where he belongs. So Spencer pumped his pistons and clickety-clacked after Thomas. Thomas heard Spencer's wheels whooshing and whirring behind him. I'll puff hardest. I'll chuff quickest. I know I can. Thomas and Spencer had the race of their lives. Thomas steamed over bridges and wheezed through tunnels. He slipped through junctions and raced round bends. Spencer thundered and roared, but he couldn't get in front of Thomas. At a junction, Thomas puffed ahead. Then he turned quickly onto a sidetrack. Spencer thundered on, then screeched to a stop. Spencer reversed back to the junction. He raced after Thomas along the narrow track. The rickety old track went over marshland. Thomas knew that it was the fastest way to Napford. Thomas huffed, and Spencer puffed. Spencer was closer and closer. Then there was trouble. The track was broken, and Spencer was too heavy with a creak and a crack. The track snapped wow. beneath him. The mighty Spencer slid into the muddy marsh. Thomas stopped. He knew what had happened, but he could do nothing. I'm sorry, Spencer. I didn't know the track was broken. I'll go on and get help. I I'll be back. And Thomas steamed on. Thomas chuffed into Knapford. He was tired and dirty. Sir Topham Hatt was having dinner with the Duke and Duchess. The station master telephoned him and asked Sir Topham Hatt to come to Knapford right away. Thomas's traction rods were trembling. His wheels wobbled. He knew he now had to tell Sir Topham Hatt everything about Hero. Sir Topham Hatt listened. Hero is an old and important engine. 
I didn't want him scrapped. That's why we tried to fix him ourselves. Sir Topham Hatt stared at Thomas. Thomas was worried. He was now sure Sir Topham Hatt would scrap Hero. Did you say Hero? Yes, sir. You mean the master of the railway? Yes, sir. Oh, he's terribly famous. Famous? He's the master of the railway. Why did you think I would scrap the master of the railway, Thomas? Why didn't you ask me? Because I was silly, sir, and worried. So I tried to fix him alone. You're not alone anymore. We must help Hero at once. Send him to the Sodor Steamworks. Victor will have his funnel bright and pistons pumping in no time. Thomas was so happy, he wanted to whistle and wish. Thank you, sir, thank you. What about Spencer? He needs help, too. I told Spencer not to leave the summer house, and he did. So Spencer must wait his turn for help after Hero. Hero, I've seen Sir Topham Hatt. He knows you're the master of the railway. You're going to be sent to the Sodor Steamworks, not the Smelter's Yard. Hooray for Thomas! Hooray for Hero! The next day, Thomas and Percy heaved and hauled Hero to the Sodor Steamworks. Sir Topham Hatt was waiting. Welcome, Hero. It's a pleasure to meet you after so long. Thank you, sir. I thank you very much. And I thank you for Thomas. Thomas did his best. Victor will make sure that you will soon be master of the railway once more. Of course, sir. Anything for you. I will do my very, very best. We all will. Sorry, boss! <laughs> I'm sorry, sir. Very slippy hook. So I see. Don't worry, hero. Victor is the best. A few days later, all the engines went to see Hero. He puffed forward slowly. The engines gasped. Hero looked wonderful, as good as new. How do you feel, Hero? Very happy, Thomas. I never thought this day would come. Job done, Victor. Welcome back, Master of the Railway. Thank you, sir. Now, Thomas, go and get that Spencer out of the mud. Here I am, Spencer. I've come to help you. You can't help me, Thomas. You're not strong enough. You're right, Spencer, but I have just the engine who can help. Who are you? I am Hero. Are you the scrap engine? I was the scrap engine. Blistering boilers. Spencer, it's time to get you out of the mud. Hello, Spencer. What do you know? Hero shunted and shifted Rocky into the right place. Very slowly and carefully, Rocky lifted Spencer back onto the track. And then, with a mighty heave and haul, Hero pulled Rocky and Spencer towards the Sodor Steamworks. When Spencer was fixed, he joined Hero and Thomas. Together, the three engines worked on the summer house. They huffed and puffed their hardest. 
Thomas, I'm sorry I thought you were a tricky engine. And Hero, I'm sorry I called you a heap of scrap. You are both fine engines and fine friends. Just then, the Duke and Duchess arrived for their holiday. They were delighted with their new summer house. That night, Thomas and Hero were resting. Their axles ached and their wheels were weary. Thomas saw that Hero was sad. What's the matter, Hero? You have been very kind, Thomas. The best friend I could ever have. But I want to go home. I understand, Hero. I can help you. Wait here. And before Hero could puff master of the railway, Thomas had chuffed away. Sir, I need your help. I know you will understand. Hero wants to go home. He hasn't been home for a very long time, and he misses his friends and his island. I understand, Thomas. You did well to ask me. Of course I will help you. Tell Hero not to worry. A few days later, all the engines were at Brendam Docks. They were very excited. Here he comes, Thomas! Right, everyone. One, two, three. All the engines whistled. Then there was one long and low whistle. It was Hero. Hero chuffed slowly up the track and stopped by Thomas and Percy. It's time for you to go home, Hero. It is, Thomas. I will never, ever forget what you did for me. I will never forget you. Perhaps I can visit you. Or perhaps you could come back and visit us one day. Maybe, Percy. Sodor will always be your home too, Hero. I know, Thomas. Thank you.